Good afternoon and welcome everyone. As we gather this day, we bring our prayer to the Lord in faith and trust and joy as we call upon our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather here in this house, in this home, for this celebration, my friends, as we stand together with two who you know and love that you have brought here together this day, with Stephen and Francesca, that as they gather intending to form a home of their own and with the future, the hopes and dreams that all of that brings, we stand in solidarity with them in a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their sisters and brothers. May we listen attentively this day to the word of the Lord that they've selected for you to hear and for them to remember. Then with Holy Mother Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he may lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. As we begin, it is with a shout out to those who join us from other places, we who are here physically in church, but those of you who, whether from the West Coast and midday, or from Italy, probably have already had your dinner and settling in, but tuning in now for what it is is coming up for the rest of the evening. And for those two in Puerto Rico, or maybe the weather just a bit warmer and sunnier than it is right here and now. Wherever we may be, it is in this moment that we find ourselves together, here in this place with open hearts, trusting in the Lord's love and mercy. We bring that to prayer. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, that these your servants that what they receive in faith, they may live out in deed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. Let us be seated, please, and be attentive to the word of the Lord. And I invite forward our first reader today, Evan, who will share with us from the Old Testament. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals. But none proved to be suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man and while he was asleep, he took out one of the ribs and closed up the place with flesh. The Lord God then built into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her, when he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. And for out of her man, this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to her, his wife and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I invite forward our second reader, Danielle, who will share with us from the New Testament. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt mercy, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Over all these virtues put on love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. Christ's peace must reign in your hearts since as members of one body you have been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. In wisdom, make perfect, instruct, and admonish one another. Sing gratefully to God from your hearts in psalms, hymns, and inspired songs. Whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, my brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become as one. They are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, let no one separate what God has joined, the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm always intrigued by what readings the couples select for their marriage. Oftentimes, it's not only for what it is that they want you to hear, but whether they realize it or not, it's what it is they're listening to hear. And the readings are relatively short, especially the gospel passage. And I know for Stephen and for Francesca and my discovery with time that we've spent together, sometimes brevity is uh, something that they treasure to get to the point as quickly as possible and keep moving on. Um, sometimes that happens and sometimes not. And that can be a, a bit of a challenge. The first reading 
is captured in what it is we hear from the Gospel of Mark, but in a very brief form from Mark. Something a bit more extended from the get-go, from the book of Genesis, that speaks of the story of creation, one that we're familiar with, and it doesn't go through the seven days, no, but very quickly zeroing in on Adam and Eve that here with all the rest of creation and one so unique and different from all the others, this one who was struggling in his own heart that he was so different from everyone else and wanted someone that was more like him. And God hearing that, feeling that, and working with that. And the story and the imagery that we have of one taken from another and a whole new life created from that reality. One a part of and yet distinctly and uniquely apart from. Two so very much like each other and in the very same breath not alike at all. Sound familiar? For every married couple, sound familiar? And when you think you know the other so very well, and it always gives me a little bit of a chill when somebody says, oh, we complete each other's sentences. We know exactly what we're thinking. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well, whatever, whatever. We'll see how long that, that pattern continues. But the reality is, and we know that, and I can hear that from you just as you're laughing. <laughs> we can plan things, <clears throat> excuse me, and want things, pray and hope that things work out a particular way. And every once in a while they actually do, but more times than not, they don't. And then what do we do with all of that? Francesca, for you and Stephen, your paths have crossed over and over again since you were little kids. In some encounters that you were aware of and would remember, and in others not. Maybe from a distance, but not from a far distance. Close enough that every single time you could have seen each other, and probably did, and weren't thinking about that encounter. Not then not with other family members or friends gathered around in other events and activities, whether at school or in the neighborhood or at play or whatever the case may be as the years have gone by. But over and over again, and it's not that your story is that unique. I've heard this a number of times from couples that their paths have crossed again and again. And some along the way brought that to their attention and sometimes they themselves realizing it as well. But stories too of your journey together and as a family, something that I had mentioned to Meredith and Nick as they were in the other evening with uh, the documents that were being signed and everything, that it's kind of a, a curious relationship that the two of you share from different perspectives of the same reality. Two and two. And uh, Armando and Vincenzo made that very clear to me at rehearsal. And for Stephen and for Nicholas, that there's the older set and the younger set. And how it is everybody has fit into that reality and how the years have played out. And the reverse of that for Francesca and Will, the older set, and the younger set with Mia and with Bella. So two very different, and yet something there that brings you together. And I bring this up today because I think it is something unique for you that the two of you are able to view life each from a different perspective, your own perspective. 
and to find a place where you meet together and to share that reality. Not that you take up sides one against the other, but in what it is you communicate and share from your hearts that you're able to bring the big picture together. Something that you shared that I was impressed with, again, not surprised though, and it happens many, many times in individuals' lives, not just for married couples, but for many of us, that something that impressed you enough to see each other in a whole new light were times in your lives where you turned to the Lord asking for help for somebody else. And from each of you, from your own perspectives, one praying for a younger little girl and another an older senior woman, a bit more mature. But in each case, you were there for each other and with each other and for each of those two women in your lives. Something that impressed you both enough to be able to share that with me. That it was something that you remembered very, very clearly and kind of set everyone else apart because of that. That it's not just about the good times and sometimes as much as it sounds like that could be the easy way to share our lives, the good times, sometimes that can be the even greater challenge. That curiously in the pain and in the struggle when we're turning to the Lord and turning to each other and really leaning on each other, whether we're aware of it or not, Sometimes that can be easier than the other way around. Because there's other times that we don't feel like we need to be leaning on each other. And maybe where everything is going so well that maybe we don't even stop and think about where God is in our lives. That's where the real challenge is. And it's in those moments when we're riding high that sometimes we can be off in different directions and not in the best places. For somebody whose business it is in so many ways to cheer out loud and to move spirits and get them going, and with a financial side to that as well. Look at that. You can have fun and make money at the same time. But it's work. It's not a game. And for somebody who's crunching numbers on one side and crunching numbers on another side in financial advising and just playing with all that money, and not a game at all, that in and through it all, the challenge can be when things appear to be going so well, that sometimes we begin crunching the people around us and not even aware of it. But the people who we work with the people who we live with, and for married couples, the people that we share our lives with. It's kind of a big balancing act, but it's not a game at all. It is a matter of the heart. And there in the reading that you've selected from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, something of that reality, of that wisdom plays out. And Again, no surprise that these are the words that you've selected maybe to hold on to for a lifetime together. The importance of reaching out to each other, of forgiving, of listening, of trusting, of knowing that you're not perfect and that none of us are, and that in and through all of that, how it is we trust and the one who loves us incredibly and keeps calling us back to center, keeps calling us back to one another, keeps calling us back to wholeness. These are words that you've selected. I'm just kind of echoing them here. And words too that maybe just for a moment in that story back at the beginning and from Genesis, Kind of a, a curious situation as well that oftentimes I really never hear people talk about. That that whole scene with all the creation and Adam not fitting in quite the way he was looking for and then having that one. That after all was said and done, 
and things got a bit messy after the fall and after the sin. All those animals that were so friendly in the beginning, both to Adam and Eve and to each other, ooh, not so much anymore. Everything had changed. They all looked at one another in a very different way. So the other side of this is that challenge to what those words of St. Paul are all about. Because God knows in our lives, there's plenty of things that we do that have us on the wrong end of things or in another place that we really didn't want to be. That doesn't mean that we're stuck there. That doesn't mean that that's the end of the story. And I know for the two of you and listening to you, that was something that you kept coming back to as well. The significance of being there for and with each other, starting again, putting the pieces back together again. But the invitation that I'd give you right here at the get-go, to allow the ones who have been a part of putting all those pieces together in your lives to continue to be there to support you. Not to be manipulating and meddling, no, that's for you out there, no. But recognize your role as this couple grows into their own person together. That for two that you've known for so long and think that you know so well, maybe there's another side of who it is they are that they're hoping to share with you. Can you be open to that? Can you support them in that? You see, on this wedding day, like with these families from two different sections, it may be the communion rail that's separating us here today, but that's just something physical. It's our hearts that are brought together in this sacrament with the two that pledge their hearts to each other that really challenge us all along the way to continue on this journey together to be there for and with each other. For these two, and for these two, for all of them as well, in the give and take. Not a game, but a matter of the heart. And one that lifts us when we're down, and one that allows us to stay balanced when we're riding high. In that spirit, at this time, Stephen and Francesca, I invite you to stand and with your witnesses at your side, Meredith and Nicholas. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you now to state your intentions. Stephen Anthony Scafidi and Francesca Marie Giordano, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you now to join your right hands, to turn and face your family and friends as well, and to declare your consent before God and his church. Okay, right hands, John. And Stephen, you're first. Okay. Don't
Don't worry about the microphone. You're looking at Francesca. I, Stephen, take you, Francesca, to be my wife. I, Stephen, take you, Francesca, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Francesca, take you, Stephen, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Amen, alleluia. And may we have the rings, please. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Francesca received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stephen received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is now to be among you at the calling of your hearts. Rest assured, this troubadour is. Stand together, my friends, as we pray for our newlyweds. I invite Robert forward at this time to lead us in our petitions. And with words that we speak aloud and from the prayer that we present from the quiet of our hearts, we join that as one as we lift them together to the Lord this day. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop James, and all the clergy everywhere, that they may lead us into a deeper faith in God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all our leaders, may they work to achieve peace and seek justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For Stephen and Francesca, that they may always remain close to Jesus in their new life together as husband and wife. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the married persons, that God will continue to bless their marriages with healthiness, happiness, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Norma Sanchez, may Jesus reach out, touch their hearts, their spirits with his healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Arnold Giordano and Lorraine Scaramella and Salvatore Barquita, especially whom we, we remember with love and affection, may they now live in perfect peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, to the prayer we bring before you in faith and in trust, and what it is we speak aloud, and what it is you hear that we present to you from the quiet of our hearts. We pray for our newlyweds this day, that in something that we see and hear in them, we may recognize the gift of your love that continues to stir in each of us and one another. Bless us all along the path that we travel. May we know that it is you who walk with us every single day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And let's have a seat, please, as we prepare the altar now for the celebration of the Eucharist and as we bring forward our gifts of bread and wine. And Rocco and Vincenzo will be presenting the offerings today. Stand together, my friends, as we pray, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you. And in your fatherly love, watch over the, those who have joined in a sacramental covenant through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in Jesus, you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace so that the sacraments we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you. And without end, we acclaim. seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ending, he took the chalice, Again, giving you thanks, he then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, with all who shepherd your church round the world. Remember our sisters, our brothers, who today seek you in healing, in body, mind, and spirit. Remember too those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, your holy apostles, the prophets and patriarchs, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together in faith, formed by divine teaching, and at the Savior's command we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, and hear the prayer that we bring this day for this bride and groom, husband and wife, who come to the altar as they begin their married life, that partaking in your holy sacrament, they may always be bound together by love for one another. Holy Father, you formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them so that as husband and wife united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, willed that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of the sacramental sign and the mystery of this marriage covenant of Christ with his church, might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your hands over these, your servants, Francesca and Stephen. We pray this day, pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds, the home they will form together, preparing their children to become members of your heavenly household, raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter, Francesca, so that she, by being a good wife and mother, may bring warmth to her home, and with a love that is pure, adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, upon Stephen, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband, a provident father one day. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. It is Jesus who shares with us the peace and joy of life and who invites us this day to turn to one another safely and to share a sign of that peace as well. May we greet one another in that spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Receive with me the body and the blood of Christ.
Let's stand together as we pray. And let us pray. Having been made partakers at your holy table in word and sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Sometimes things happen in our lives that we're aware of. More times than not, we haven't the slightest idea. For how it is your paths have crossed so many times over that reality that finds its meeting place here today. In this time, in this church, with the two of you side by side and family gathered around. Something that you had shared, and I bring it to your attention because it's something worth holding on to because there's someone who is holding on to you. On the day that you proposed marriage, even though you were so well prepared for it and knowing that you were going to be husband and wife and how that was all going to happen, nonetheless, in that moment and in that time, unfolding in a way that you had not expected, and that in that moment, it was a surprise. The 15th of August, is the day that the church celebrates the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. There's someone, she, who has been watching out for you with a mother's love all along the way. It's on that day that the church celebrates her being taken up, body, spirit, into heaven. But with an Italian tradition rooted deep in faith and history, that day, it's described as her dormizio, her going to sleep. Not like Sleeping Beauty, but her going to sleep and wakening up, awakening to a whole new reality. And it's the mystery of that reality that touches us in love this day. And for you as a couple, whether you know it or not, she who shares that veil of love over you. May you know that in times of great joy and in times of great sorrow, may you bring your prayer through her intercession with a mother's love that reaches out for you. Let's bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing this day, for Stephen, for Francesca, and through them for each of us. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you one day in your children. Amen. May the holy and only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here who join us in one spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and with joy this day, my delight to be able to introduce for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Scafidi.